Okay, the first, we move to the first verse, 1084 1. So I will start again. Today we will discuss chapter 84, the sages' teachings of Gokshatta, verses 1 to 29. So I just said that in Gokshatta, so many personalities came for the occasion of the solar eclipse, but everyone came really to see Krishna. So, now in this chapter we will hear of the sages. So after the meeting with the gopis and their meeting uh, with them after so long, the queens expressed their moods towards Krishna. We will find it will not be so intense, it will move now more from Lila to philosophy, different, with different intensities of expression of love and transcendental emotions. So let's read, let's read the first verse of this chapter. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Shisuka Uvacha Shrutva Pita Subha Sorry, Sutva Pita Subala Putra Tajakna Sene Madafya Taxi Siti Papatnia Uta Svagopia Krishna Kilat Mani Aram Panayan Vandam Sarva Fishes Muh Alam Asu Kalakulaksha Translation Sukadev Goswami said, Pitta, Gandhari, Draupadi, Subhadra, the wives of other kings and the Lord's coward girlfriends were all amazed to hear of the Queen's deep love for Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God and Soul of all beings, and their eyes filled with tears. So what do we learn here? The Coward girls, the Bhaja Gopikas, they were am am amazed to hear the expressions and the depth of their heartfelt love for Krishna of the queens. Is that, is that not amazing? That uh, instead of being envious or inimical, they were they were appreciating. So this, this is the spiritual world. Although there was a kind of transcendental competition between some of the queens and the gopis, although on another level, as the, the queens are expansions factually of the gopis, there was no enmity, rather they were so thrilled and amazed that uh, they were amazed of the attachment and love that the other person had for Krishna. And they were filled with appreciation. They could see that the center was Krishna and that the queens were giving so much pleasure to Krishna. But not only the gopis were there, also Gandhari, Pritta, Draupadi, Subhadra. So, we go back to the text. Yeah, I can still not share. Let's see. Can someone read the purpose of the first text, please? Yes, yes. Drupadi is the chief here in this okay. assembly of exalted women. Since, Since as, as explained by, by Sila, Sidara Swami, Swami she had, had asked the question that Lord Krishna's queens answered, answered by relating their, their respective, respective stories. stories. Since Sidari Gadari and the, and the other ladies named here were not, were not even, even mentioned, mentioned in the previous chapter as, as having been, been present, present. Acharya, Acharya Sidara concludes. Conclude, that 
they must they have, have had, had the coin's narration, narration only, only second hand. Indeed, Indeed Drupadi, Drupadi will never, will never have, have spoken, spoken so freely in the presence of Rita and Gandhari, her, her elders, elders are, or before the Gopis, whose, whose attitude, attitude toward the queens of Doraka was, was not particularly, particularly um, um, sympathetic. sympathetic. Even, Even though, though the, the Gopis, Gopis joined in, in shedding tears, tears, it was not because, because of their, their being reminded, reminded of Sri Krishna's pastimes that because, because that, that because, because of any loving, loving affinity, affinity between, between them, them and the queens. queens. We, should we should remember, remember of course, that, that there, is there is always perfect, perfect harmony, harmony on the, on the spiritual, spiritual platform. platform. Apparent, Apparent conflict, conflict between, between pure, pure devotees is nothing, nothing like mundane, mundane envy, envy or strife. strife. The jealousy, the jealousy of, the of the gopis was, was more shown, shown, shown than, than substance, substance being, being exhibited, exhibited by them by as, as an ecstatic symptom of their, of their overflowing, overflowing love, love for Krishna. Krishna. Srila Siddhas Swami Pada, Pada further analyzed the, the face is Swa, Swa, Swa Gopia as applying that, that these gopis were the, the queens, queens Swa, 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 Swa Rupa, Rupa, the original, original photo type of who the queens were, were spe spe specific, specific expansions. expansions. Yes, they were expansions of the gopis. There is also a commentary of Ishvanat Sakavarti Thakur on this verse. <laughs> In the 84th chapter, there is a material, material praise between Krishna and the sages. Questions by Vasudev, performance of Jagya by Vasudev, and Nanda's departure for Vraj. So we will hear of all of this. Dal Gandhari, Subalaputri, Draupadi, Chaknaseni, and Subhadra, Madai, all heard the discussions of the queens those such as Gan Gandhari, uh, such as Gadadari, or Gandhari, I don't know, did not hear directly, because it was not fitting for them to be involved in the intimate discussions with questions and answers between Draupadi and the Queens in such independent way. Because Draupadi and Subhadra were intimate friends of the same age with the queens, it was proper that they heard directly. The coward women, living in another place because of their different castes, heard even more indirectly. The word Uta indicates this separation of distance. By the word Swa, by the word Swa, since they no, since, since they identified themselves as the eternal energy of Krishna, they would have ca carry on their intimate pastimes such as embracing without others seeing every night at that place. But in Kurukshetra, at the holy place, one should understand that they carried out the practice of Brahmacharya and did not engage in such activities. The gopis were also astonished and shed tears on hearing the queen's pastimes because they were pastimes concerning Krishna and they saw their very slight similarity to their own emotions. Interesting, a very slight similarity to their own emotions. It should be understood that the gopis did not have overwhelming attraction to the queen's pastimes. It is Vishwanasakavakti Thakur, he, he knows the personalities and how they feel and think and by that he comes to all these conclusions that are very beautiful. That. So text 2.5. Just, yeah. 
to five. It's a whole list of names of all these sages. As the women thus talked among themselves, and the men among themselves, a number of great sages arrived there, all of them eager to see Lord Krishna and, Bal and Lord Balaram. They included Dvaipajana, Narada, Syavana, Devala, and Ashita, Vishvamitra, Satananda, Bharadvaj, and Gautama, and Lord Parasuram and his disciples, Vashista, Galava, Brihu, Pulastya, Kashab, Atri, Markandeya, and Vyaspati, Dvita, Tritra, Ekata, and the four Kumaras, and Angira, Agastya, Jachya, Valka, and Vamandev. That, uh, so, there are these sages are all worshipful, wonderful uh, personalities. They have come here on the occasion of the solar eclipse. But as the verse directly says, they were eager to see Krishna. And this is the great wealth of any person to see, serve or to be in the presence of Krishna. This is quite spontaneous on the part of the sages. Now, we have here the topmost personalities in society described with their, with, with their relationship with Krishna and Balaram. The head of society are the Brahminical sages because they are meant to guide society. So, what what is the what what is the highest on the Varnashram level? The sages are situated so high on the Varnashram level, but the Tvarkavashis and the Vrindavan Vashis, they are practically on the topmost level. The depth of their love with Krishna is greater and intimate. Intimacy comes by love when there is the deepest trust that one is closer to the other person. The bridge vases were unequal because they taught nothing. They spoke nothing about Krishna, but their consciousness they were fully Krishna conscious. Completely, continuously, and only absorbed in thoughts of pleasing Krishna. Their situation is quite unique. Therefore, the tenth canto, which we are coming to the end of, so the, because the other cantos, they were meant to bring us to the point of appreciation. Appreciation of the pure, sublime consciousness of the Vraja Vasis. Um, so, go back. Text 6. As soon as they saw the sages approaching, the kings and other gentlemen had, who had been seated immediately stood up including the Pandava brothers and Krishna and Balaram. They all then bowed down to the sages who are honored throughout the universe. <coughs> so everyone, everyone stood up out of respect. The, to respect the sage, sages, uh, the, disregarding the depth of their own spiritual advancement of their spiritual position. Why do they do that? So, for them it's natural. There is no envy. There is no material com competition. They appreciate the sages because they are sages. They are not thinking, why should I stand up for them? They are just 
following the normal everyday strictures of Varnashram. So Krishna and Balaram are teaching us here that uh, someone asked Srila Prabhupada, what do you want the children to learn? And he replied, when they see a sannyasi, they should bow down. That is what education means. Bowing down before a sage, the Varnashram society facilitated the quality that is required. So when someone bows down to another, they, they acknowledge their superior position. <coughs> Nowadays in contemporary uh, society or contemporary so-called civilization, there is no need to acknowledge someone in a superior position than me. No one is superior to me. <laughs> Basically the path of materialistic life falls in. Always thinking myself the topmost deserving person. Why? Because I am me, the center of existence. I deserve to have everything. I deserve to understand everything. And I want everything to understand, everyone to understand who I am. How wonderful I am and how powerful I am. These are, of course, actions of the illusory energy. <laughs> this, despite we are tiny and insignificant, that is what we are. First they stood up out of respect and then they bowed down out of respect. Now, we will have text 7. We are going to text 7. Lord Krishna, Lord Balaram and the other kings and leaders properly worshipped the sages. I offer them words of greetings, sitting places, water for washing their feet, drinking water, flower garlands, incense and sandalwood paste. I get a message that my internet connection is unstable. If I get out again, disconnected, I will disconnect. I will connect again. So we are at text 7. Krishna and Balaram offered in respect. So to be a king, one need to have a huge false ego. You need to have a particular mood to be a king. Because you have to protect the citizens. And yeah, you, you must be happy to accept the challenge. That means, and we will continue, so we will, we just have read text 7, and Lord uh, Krishna and Balaram offered their respect, and uh, I mentioned that to be king, you need a huge false ego. You need to have a particular mood because you have to protect the citizens and be glad to accept any challenge. That means that you have to think yourself the topmost. It is essential for leaders that kings within the Varnashram system, when they see sages, that they bow down and worship them. Otherwise, they will be out of control. The sages keep the society in a spiritual direction. The kings deal so much with power and wealth in the mode of passion. So they will tend to be influenced by that and therefore the check and balance in society is given by the king's sub subservience to the sages. And they fear the sages because kings by definition as as warriors, they have to be so brave 
they, they should not have fear of anyone. Otherwise, how can they rise to the challenge of fighting? But they fear sages because they have the power that they cannot stop. And that is the power of the curse. They cannot, they fear the curse of the sages because they have no control, the power of renunciation. Okay, you don't take my advice, the sage says, I'm leaving. I even take the side of your enemy. So they stood up and they bowed down and they worship. And it is, it is wonderful that, uh, so I read the verse again, Lord Krishna, Lord Balaram and the other kings and leaders properly worshipped the sages by offering them words of greetings, sitting places, water for washing their feet, drinking water, flower garments, incense and sandalwood paste. Yeah. So they stood up, they bowed down, they, wor they worshipped. So, they were not at their home in their palaces. They were traveling, but they offered everything they had. Now we go to verse 8. After the sages were comfortably seated, the Supreme Lord Krishna, whose transcendental body protects religious principles, addressed them in the midst of that great assembly. Everyone listened silently with rapt attention. So why did everyone listen silently and carefully? Their consciousness was focused. So why? Who is going to be speaking? Krishna. The Supreme Personality of God, it, the topmost person in existence, is going to speak. So, therefore, they were interested that he, what, is, what, what he is going to say. He's the all-knowing, the all-powerful, the all-wealthy, the all-renounced, the all-beautiful, the all-famous, and he's going to speak. Whatever he says is going to be exceptional. He's speaking to these sages, to the all-powerful sages. And he's going to be in his all-powerful mood. Or is he going to be in his Varnashra mood? It seems going the way that he will be in the Varnashra mood. When he's in the Varnashra mood, then what is the purpose of his speaking? <laughs> First, it's for the benefit of society, for everyone who is there, the kings, everyone that uh, so we are also listening so it is also for our benefit lord krishna speaks to the sages in four verses and then the sages are going to speak look at the perspectives here what Krishna wants us to see and learn and what the sages are actual thinking after being spoken to by Krishna and on the Varnashram level. How do we know that they are aware that Krishna is the Supreme Lord? That uh, they have come from all over the land, not specifically to take bath during the solar eclipse, but to see Krishna and Balaram. They wanted to see him because they were sages. They knew who these persons were. Not that everyone from anywhere came to see them, but the sages came because that is the meaning of being a sage. It is very rare to have the association of Krishna and Balaram. So here now the four verses that Krishna is speaking that um, so we will hear these four verses just a moment so 
Lord X9. The Supreme Lord said, now our lives are indeed successful for we have obtained we have obtained life's ultimate goal the audience of great yoga masters which even demigods only rarely obtain krishna says we have obtained life's ultimate goal that uh, so they were seeing Krishna and Balaram as Yogeshvar. To see with our eyes means that means seeing what is there. Seeing with our eyes is seeing whatever else sees. And this is what what we think. That uh, so but if there is a car accident with 20 witnesses and you ask each, each of the 20 witnesses what happened, then you most probably get 20 different answers. That uh, we see not only with our eyes, but with our very subjective mentalities. That, uh, This is something to keep in mind in our dealings with each other, that we have our perception of reality, but we don't know what, re what reality, the reality as it is. Not only should we tell everyone what we think, but we should remember that this is only what we think. As we see with our minds, we also hear with our minds that uh, we can close our eyes but we can't physically close our eyes we don't hear what other people say sometimes so this is what the sages are saying they see krishna as yogesvar vasudev sees krishna in one way and thus the yadus are seeing krishna in another way and the residents of Vrindavan are seeing Krishna in a completely different way. It appears superficially that the residents of Vrindavan are seeing Krishna in the least perfect way because how do they see him as Lala, a boy, a boy? He's our boy. He's from our village. We grew up with him and no one else knows him. He's our boy. Just like we have, our, uh, we have any friends. As, has anyone still friends they grew up with? Mostly we have grown distance from those we have we, with whom we grew up with. Does someone has friends who, who they know for 30, 40 years? Just a moment, I'm still looking. Yeah, yeah. Because on my, on my mobile it may disconnect again, but we continue. We know them in a different way. It's very interesting to have very old friends. Because you know each other and are still friends after 40 years. It, it passed the test of time. The resident of Vrindavan, they say that we really know what Krishna likes how he wants to dress, how he likes to eat. Because the Vajravasis thinks, yeah, we know how Krishna likes to play. So he really likes, we know what he really likes to do. He's our boy, the Vajravasis say. What is the difference between the vision of the sages and the residents of Vrindavan? It is not the eyes that see, but it is a different transcendental mentality. Of course, we know that the residents of Vrindavan have a supreme, transcendental mentality because their love of Krishna is so complete. That, uh, so, Krishna reciprocates with that. This is Ahyaya Hyan. Krishna reveals himself. 
We see, we see him according to our consciousness. If we take that point seriously, then we understand why we see what we see. Because this is Krishna's reciprocation with us. We see the world through the filter of our mind. We can understand the way our minds are by the way we think. Though that through that way, Krishna tells every day, every minute of every day, what we have to do to improve, what we have to increase, what we have to decrease, watching our own consciousness. The sages with the exalted consciousness filled, filled with so much reference toward the Supreme Lord, and we will hear exactly what our consciousness is. Because whatever our consciousness is, is how we think. And what we think comes out of our mouth sometimes and is sometimes in our words. They will tell us how they viewed Krishna in a few moments, but now Krishna is viewing them. Text 10. So Krishna continues. How is, how is it that people who are not very austere and will recognize God, God only in his deity form in the temple, can now see you, touch you, inquire from you, and bow down to you, worship your feet, and serve you in other ways. So it's glorified saintly association. And what is implicit in what Krishna is saying is that to gain saintly association is great fortune. That uh, this fortune doesn't come to everyone. It, is, it usually comes to those who are austere. It usually doesn't come to those who only see God in the deity, in the temple. What does that mean? Does that mean that we criticize those who see the deity in the temple? No, but if they only see Krishna in the temple, that is what Kapilamuni ex also explains in the third country of the Bhagavatam, explaining the different kinds of Bhagavatas. <laughs> if one sees the Lord only in the deity and does not see the Lord in, in everyone's heart, every single living entity's heart, then that is a Prakrita Bhakta. It is a lower class. Krishna is putting himself and all the kings speaking here on the Varnashram level. People who are materialistic, who are engaged in opulence and austerity, they tend to have the fortune to see sages. And this for another reason. Sages don't want to see them. Why? Because, please give me this, that solve this problem get rid of my enemy, and so on. Because this kind of association, kingly association for a sage, is contaminating association. That we are in a material world because we have a tendency to enjoy and to lord over material existence. Love makes the world go around, but money greases the wheels. This is the golden rule. One wears the gold make the, makes the rules that uh, he wears gold rules. Asat sangat yag, nectar of instruction, do not associate with wealthy people. These are the Gaudiya Vaishnava teachings. For a man to enjoy with women brings out more than, the, more than anything else, the enjoying spirit. Okay, also to associate with men attached to women and vice versa, also amongst the ladies. It brings out the spirit of enjoyment, that I'm not a servant, I want to exploit the material world for my pleasure. Purusa prakatastu hi bhunkte prakati jan kunan. Everyone in the material world is in a weak position. This is because the material energy is such a strong position, that because it is empowered by Krishna, Deva Yese Guna Maya Mama Maya Drachya Mami Vaya Prabhachanti Maya Etam Tarantite. Therefore, the best is to keep oneself aloof from that. Paksidanta Sarasvati Maharaj, we, 
that's really the temples of the Gaudiya Math, uh, he, he, he saw them as fortresses, so that the devotees wouldn't have to go to, for any bad association. And that was the mood of Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada. Once the temples became empty because the devotees left, then the devotees could not continue their practice in the same way. To, to be in a material world is such a different circumstance. That, uh, so, therefore, Krishna says that it is a, a grace, a mercy that we have obtained your association. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Sastra Kois, Lava Matri, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Sitra Hoi. The verdict of all revealed scriptures is that even a moment's association with a pure devotee, one can attain all success. Text 11. We are still online, but it can break every moment. But uh, if I don't come back online, because I see I have three internet connections, my two regular connections, connections are disconnected, no internet. So I'm only on, on, dependent on a mobile, which uh, with one gig, gigabyte only, that um, I'm just checking what my current balance is and we can get an idea how long we will stay online. Text 11. Mere bodies of water are not real sacred places that uh, So, mere bodies of water are not real sacred places of pilgrimage, nor are mere images of earth and stone the true worshipful deities. These purify one only after a long time. But saintly sages purify one immediately upon being seen. That, uh, that's text. 11. So this is the concept of the sages being Tirta Bhutani Tirtani. Actually the walking places of pilgrimage because of having the Lord in their hearts. A place is a whole is holy when Krishna is there. This gives a hint. What does it mean to be a sage? That uh, It means to be fixed on the transcendental platform. What does it mean, transcendental platform? It means one's heart, one's consciousness, mind is filled with thoughts of Krishna. A materialistic mind is filled with anything other than thoughts of Krishna. Specifically, in an enjoying spirit, we see with our consciousness, with our minds, when our consciousness is covered with false ego that is Maya. That is the first gift of Maya. That is a false ego. This is the first gift of the conditioned soul. When you go to prison, the first thing they do is giving you a nice set of clothes because your prison uniform, the first element of the prison uniforms in the material world is false ego. The number is your identity. Our consciousness comes filled with false ego and a sage means that one's consciousness is filled with Krishna. It is filled with a serving spirit of Krishna. And through that consciousness and spirit, it sees the world, a serving spirit. Why would we have a serving spirit? A sage means that this consciousness of being a servant of Krishna has penetrated the depths of who is. A sage has just one identity. I'm Krishna's servant. The, the respect given to the sage is mentioned in various parts of the Bhagavatam. For example, in the 48th chapter of the 10th canto, when Krishna visits the house of Akura, that, uh, and, uh, yes, what Krishna says, 
to Akula that because he has no false ego, he should go to Hastinapur. We have also Lord Shiva speaking to Markandeya Rishi, chapter 12, chapter 10, verses 19 till 25. So seeing a sage, a mortal achieves mortality. One can say that Kamsa saw the Lord and he did not gain immortality. The seeing is a particular type of seeing. It's not just with the eyes. From the perspective of Shastra, it is the perspective that, that is important because we have all our subjective way of seeing things. We have Shastra. Shastra is a check. We want to learn how to see the vision or consciousness correct, must be corrected to the lens of Shastra. Lord Narayan takes this point, point even further when Durvasa Muni approaches him. Durvasa was fleeing the chakra. Canto 9, chapter 4, verses 63-70. It says, Ashvatantra, I'm completely dependent upon my devotees. We can say that the sages have the power of purifying. That is what the verse we are referring to as saying, even more than holy places and holy rivers, even more. They have the power to control Krishna. This is quite astounding. Lord Narayan speaking, Lord Shiva speaking, Lord Krishna is speaking to Akrura, they say the same. So this is the heart of Vedic culture. This is actually the essence of Vedic culture. And Krishna himself speaks it. Because, because the, personality the personality of God, of God is, is absolute, absolute, the Supreme, the Supreme Spirit, Spirit, any representation, representation of him, him whether, whether manifested, manifested in stone, stone pain, pain, sound, or, or any other authorized, authorized medium, medium, is not different, different from, from his original, original form, form in the top of spiritual planet, Golok Rindavan. But, but ordinary, ordinary demigods, demigods are not, are not absolute, absolute. Being, being infinitesimal, infinitesimal spirit, spirit soul. soul. And, and thus, thus representations, representations of the demigods, demigods are, not are not identical with them. them. Worship of demigods, demigods or ritual bathing, bathing in a sanctified, sanctified place gives only limited benefit to those, those who lack transcendental faith, faith in the Supreme Lord. Lord. On the other hand, the great question of saints like Nasadev, Narad, and the four Kumars are always absorbed in Krishna consciousness, and thus they are veritable moving tirthas, places of pilgrimage. Even a moment's association with them, especially by hearing the glorification of the Lord, can deliver one from all material entanglement. As King Yudhishthira said to Vidura, my, My Lord, Lord devotees, devotees like, like your good your self, self are verily really holy places, places for solidified. Because, because you carry, you carry the, personality the personality of Godhead within, within your heart, heart you, turn you turn all places, places into places, places of pilgrimage. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for thank you. 12. Neither the demigods controlling fire, the sun, the moon, and the stars, nor those in charge of earth, water, ether, air, speech, and mind actually remove the sins of their worshippers, who continue to see in terms of dualities, but wise sages destroy one's sins when respectfully served for even a few moments. Can someone also read this purport, please? An immature devotee of the Supreme Lord may accept only the deity of the Lord as divine and see everything as material, even the Lord's confidential servants. Nonetheless, because he recognized Lord Vishnu's supreme position, such a devotee is better situated than materialistic worshipper of the demigods and he thus deserves a degree of respect. Association with advanced sages, either directly or by hearing their instructions, is recommended in this verse for one who wishes to advance beyond the lowest stages of devotional service. A neophyte devotee may be free from the more obvious sense of violence against innocent creatures and against his own body and mind. 
But until he becomes very advanced on devotional path, he must always contend with the subtler contaminations of false pride, disrespect towards respectable Vaishnavas, and lack of compassion for suffering creatures. The best, the best remedy for these, these symptoms of immaturity is to hear from and honor pure Vaishnavas and to assist them in working to deliver the fallen conditioned souls. Thank you. The commentary of Ishvanachika Bhakti Thakur concerning the worship of voice and mind, Shruti says, those who will worship the voice as Brahman and those who will worship the mind as Brahman, those who see the difference between himself and others, who are actually similar because of the urges like hunger and thirst and gain of respect and other desires cannot destroy their sins, such as envy, disrespect and contempt arising from seeing difference by such worship. But they can destroy those sins by serving the great devotees. So the voice and mind are not independent of the Lord. So there seems to be a way to worship the voice and mind as non-different from the Lord. This is described in the 11th canto, how to worship the Lord through the different elements and are they mystic cities. This is the process of gaining them. Text 13. So this is, uh, I think, a key memory verse. Yasyata buddhi kuna petita tu kes vadikla tradi sibama itchati. Yatirta buddhi salini nakari chit. Janes abhihesi sai vago kara. One who identifies himself as the inner body composed of mucus, bile, and air, who assumes his wife and family are permanently his own, who thinks an earthen image or the land of his birth is worshipable or who sees a place of pilgrimage as smear the water there, but who never identifies himself, feels kinship with, or worships, or even visits those who are wise in spirit or truth, such a person is no better than a cow of an ass. That was text 13. So Krishna has finished speaking four wonderful verses. What is the essence of what Krishna said in these four verses? That uh, the worship the sadhus. This is the essence of Vedic culture. The sadhus carry the Lord in their heart. They carry assimilated Shastra because they are actually on that platform. So how do the sages uh, react when the Supreme Personality of Godhead greets them, that uh, text 14, 14. Sukadev Goswami said, hearing such unfathomable words from the unlimitedly wise Lord Krishna, the learned Brahmins remained silent, their minds bewildered. So unfathomable words means unlimitedly deep words, so much that they are not understandable. He's speaking to the sages, but no one can really understand the depths of the Lord's words. There are about 80 commentaries on Simon Bhagavatam because it, it is a book that is so deep. Such a limited amount of commentaries can be written about it and still one does not get to the end of it. There are different viewpoints and ideas on Bhagavad Gita, so many, because his words are unlimitedly wise, they are unlimitedly deep. Why were they, they, why were they bewildered? Because they knew he was the Supreme Personality of God, and he, came, and, and, and he came to see them, and look how he's speaking and saying that the real benefit of life is seeing them, but the real benefit of life is obtained by seeing him. Now, text 15. For some time the sages pondered the Supreme Lord's behavior, which resembled that, that of a subordinate living being. 
They concluded that he was acting this way to instruct the people in general. Thus they smiled and spoke to him, the spiritual masters of the universe. Can someone read the purport here of 15? explains the word as referring to one, to one's not being in control, or in other words, to being under the law of karma, obliged to work and experience the result of one's work. While addressing the sages, Lord Krishna accepted the rule of his subordinate living being to emphasize the importance of hearing and serving simply by snares. The personality of God is also the supreme teacher of spiritual sovereign. Thank you. So now the sages start to reply. They will speak in 11 verses, 16. The great sage is said, your power of illusion has totally bewildered us, the most exalted knowers of the truth and leaders among the universal creators. How amazing it is the behavior of the Supreme Lord. He covers himself with human-like activities and pretends to be the, the subject to superior control. So, he covers himself and they are amazed about Krishna's activities. Krishna is glorifying the sages and the sages are glorifying Krishna. Indeed, the human-like pastimes of the Almighty are simply a pretense. Effortlessly, he, he, he alone sends forth from himself this variegated creation, maintains it and then swallows it up again, all without becoming entangled. Just as the element earth takes on many names and forms in its various transformations. That, uh, so, Lord Krishna is unlimited, but he acts, he acts as a king. That, uh, or as a son of Mother Yasoda, or as a lover for the gopis. All objects in this world are transformations of the earth. Can someone read the purpose of 17, please? The one supreme expands himself as many without diminishing his completeness. He does this effortlessly without depending on anyone or anything else. This mystic potency of the Lord's self-expansion is incomprehensible to all but himself. But the example of the substance earth and its main whole product bears enough resemblance to provide some idea. The same example is also presented in an often cited passage of the Chandodaya Upanishad. Earth's transformation are merely verbal creations of the process of meaning. The substance earth itself is alone real. Srila Sridhar Swami suggests that this verse of Srimad Bhagavatam answers a possible objection on the part of Lord Krishna. How can I create, maintain and destroy? How can I create, maintain and destroy the universe? The answer is given by the words Aho Vibhu Man Charitam Vidam Banam. You are the perfectly complete whole, and your birth and pastimes are only an imitation of ordinary person's activities in the material world. You simply pretend to be under higher control. Thank you. Text 18. Nonetheless, it's at suitable times you assume the pure mode of goodness to protect your devotees and punish the wicked. Thus, you, the soul of Varnashram, social order, the supreme personality of God, maintain the internal path of the Vedas by enjoying your, your pleasure. So what does it mean that is the soul of the Varnashram order? The soul gives life. 
This is also in the third canto, the universal form. But the universal form will not perform its, its, its activities until Lord Vishnu enters. So Lord Vishnu is the soul of the universe. Kshyodakashaya Vishnu gives life to the universe. The sages are followers of the Vedic system. Further in this canto, the Vedas personified will speak. That's, uh, yes, chapter 87, I think. Text 19. The Vedas are your spotless heart, and through them one can perceive, by means of austerity study and self-control, the manifest, the unmanifest, the pure existence, transcendental to both. 20. Therefore, Supreme Brahman, you honor the members of the Brahminical community, for they are perfect agents by which one can realize you through the evidence of the Vedas, for that very reason, you are the foremost worshippers of the Brahmins. So, we don't need only to read the books. We also need the teachers of the books, the agents. Though the Brahmins, through the Brahmins, we understand the true purpose of the Vedas. That shows what the Brahmins are supposed to do. They are supposed to study Shastra and carry it with them and give the essence of Shastra to them, people can understand the purpose of Shastra. To make that point, Krishna gives so much respect to the Brahmins. Krishna respected the Brahmins in so many places. We see, we have heard about Sudama Vipra, that uh, we have heard about King Riga, Krishna instructing his sons that, uh, that, that uh, so Krishna said, that our life is perfected, perfected by seeing you. And now the Brahmas are, are basically going to say the same thing. Read, we will read text 21. Today our birth, education, austerity and vision have all become perfect because we have been able to associate with you the goal of all saintly persons. Indeed, you yourself are the ultimate supreme blessing. That text 22. Let us offer obeisance unto that supreme personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna, the infinitely, infinitely intelligent super soul, who has disguised his greatness to his mystic yoga maya. So he's covering himself, acting as a king. But he is always acting in more in the most extraordinary ways. No, text 20, 23. Neither these kings, nor even the Vrishnis, who enjoy your intimate association, know you as the soul of, ex of all existence, the force of time and the supreme controller for they are covered by the cur curtain of Maya. So again, what is their qualification for being sages? Being the via medium for the Shastri conclusions. Here they are speaking the Shastri conclusions. We are reminded here that whatever Krishna does is ext extraordinary. He has nothing to do with the way ordinary jivas in the material world relate with each other. We can understand how exceptional it is to have such an intimate relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is extraordinary to attain the intimacy of such a relationship. Abhideya Tattva teaches us to move in the direction of such intimate relationship. Intimacy means more love and more trust. The relationship of the Vrachavasis with Krishna is the most loving and trusting relationship. It is the topmost position of atheism. Well, it is the topmost position of theism, sorry, that this most loving and trusting relationship with Krishna does the highest. A sleeping person Im imagines an alternative reality for himself and seeing himself as having various names and forms forgets his waking identity which is distinct from the dream. 
Similarly, the senses of one whose consciousness is bewildered by illusion perceive only the names and forms of material objects. Thus such a person loses his memory and cannot know you. Then we have the next verse. 26. Today we have directly seen you, lotus feet. The souls of the holy Ganges, which washes away volumes of sins, perfect that yogis cannot best meditate upon your feet within their hearts, but only those who render you wholehearted devotional service and in this way vanquish the soul's covering, the material mind attain you as their final destination. Therefore kindly show mercy to us, your devotees. So then the sages took leave and they prepared to go home. Text 28. 27. Sukadev Kosat, having thus spoken, O oh, wise the sages then took leave of Lord Dasara, Dhritarashtra, and Yudhisthira, and prepared to depart for the ashrams. 28. Seeing that they were about to leave, the renowned Vasudeva approached the sages after bowing down to them and touched their feet. He spoke to them with carefully chosen words. 29, the last verse for today. She Vas Vasudev said, Obeisance to you, the residents of all the demigods. Please hear me, O sages, kindly tell us how the reactions of one's work can be counteracted by further work. So Vas Vasudev is thinking that he is an, that he is an ordinary person. How can our bad karma be removed by karma yoga? That, uh, so, we will hear about that, the, the answer in the next session tomorrow. So, we have come to the point, to the end of this uh, section. And I propose that we convene again tomorrow. And tomorrow, after the next section, we can have a longer period for discussion, or at the beginning even, that uh, we can discuss this section. Good. Uh, thank you very much. Sorry that we have, we don't have internet connections here, only a poor connection via mobile, which is nearly, yeah, and this is nearly finished. Good, thank you. See you, see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna. Jai for thank, thank you, Maharaj. Happy Bhakti Siddhanta as well. Recording stopped. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Maharaj. Jai, Jai, Jai. 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 Jai.